Hey everyone, it's Colt. This is the second video in a series I'm doing on accessibility. I guess I'm calling it Adventures in Accessibility. It's a little late to change it now. This one is on alerts. The previous video was on images. I explained in more detail in the first video uh, my thought process, my the angle I'm trying to take in teaching this. I wanted to, instead of just showing you and saying, hey, this is a good idea, use this attribute, it makes it more uh, accessible, for example, I wanted to actually use a screen reader to demonstrate the real impact, show you the experience of, of somebody who actually relies on these technologies. So with that said, we're talking about alerts here. Uh, if you want to know more about the screen reader I'm using, how to launch it, you can watch the first video. But that's pretty much the only thing that carries over here. So alerts, uh, I have a sample website here that I've made. I am using Bootstrap for styling, but it's not at all relevant to the content. All of these examples are going to hinge around one single attribute. Where are you? Here we go. Role set to alert. Role equals alert. This has a very, very Im large impact uh, on users who rely on screen readers, and I'll show you why in just a moment. I have a couple of examples, but let's just talk about the idea of an alert. The idea is you have some information, usually important information you want to tell your user about. So right off the bat, we should clarify, you don't wanna be abusing this. You don't wanna be alerting your users to stupid stuff or to, I don't know, you don't wanna be trolling them with, with irrelevant information. And you'll see what happens with the screen reader. Um, anytime we use that attribute role equals alert on an item, it's going to be read immediately or almost immediately uh, to the user. So it, it tells them right away. So on this site, I have an alert that's already there when the page loads. I have some that will appear as we click. I have some information on buttons. Uh, we have an alert that appears when I try and submit a form. But let's just start with this simple one that is on the page. When the page loads, it says successfully signed in, welcome back. So uh, all that you need to know, again, this is just styling information, but I give it role set to alert. When this page loads and there's somebody using a screen reader to access it, this is going to be read out immediately. Even if it's all the way down the page or buried in the middle, if it has role set to alert, the screen reader gives it priority and it doesn't even give the user an option, really. It just starts reading it. So let me show you that now. Okay, so I'm on the page now. I'm gonna refresh. I have my screen reader open. Reload this page. Successfully signed in. Welcome back. And it reads, successfully signed, successfully in. signed in. Welcome back right away. So whatever that information is, if it has role set to alert, as soon as it's visible on the page, it's read out loud. Okay, so that's the simplest example when the page loads. But more frequently, we have alerts that are appearing later on. Voice over off. Turning it off there. For example, like this. Probably not when you're just clicking a button, but there's a whole bunch of examples. Uh, you try and sign in, you're submitting a form, you're, I don't know, you're buying something, there's an error, whatever it is. We want warnings, we want notifications that explain, this is good, this is bad. And if you're on a screen reader, it's really important that you see those. So these two alerts, the only difference between them, other than the color, is the role set to alert attribute. So this first one I'm calling bad example or bad alert. Uh, I'll show you down here. I'm just using some simple jQuery. It's really not very elegant code at all. This alert does not have role set to alert. The second one that I'm calling good alert does. Otherwise, they're identical except for their color and their text. So I'm gonna load the screen reader now and show you the difference. Okay, so I have focused on this button to trigger the bad alert. Imagine this is somebody submitting a form and I'm gonna hit space and the voiceover key. Press trigger bad alert button. Okay, so it tells me I pressed the button, but it didn't tell me any of this information. This is super important. You are deleting the world. Press trigger bad. So it's not telling me that. One more time. Press trigger bad alert button. And of course I can see it here, but if I was unable to see the screen and I'm just having to rely on my screen reader, I don't know that anything new appeared. So let's compare it with the second example. Okay, so now I'm going to trigger the good alert. Watch out, you are about to destroy humanity. Okay, so I got that little tone that tells me there's an alert, but also it read it out loud immediately. Watch out, you are about to destroy humanity. Watch out, you are okay. about to destroy That's humanity. Close. So very important difference. Uh, and this is a hugely important message. Watch out, you're about to dis destroy humanity. But even if it's something simple, you know, successfully, X, or if it's just a warning or a note, you have to be very conscientious about what you're alerting a user to. You don't want to spam it. You don't want to be annoying, but you also can't leave off any important information. 
And again, the only difference between these two is that this one, this alert that's appearing, has roll set to alert if we inspect it. Oh boy, that's quite small over there. But you can see right here, roll equals alert. This one above does not have that. That's the only difference. So another note that I want to bring up here has to do with the button to close it. This is not, it doesn't actually have to do with roll set to alert, uh, but it's important because this button here is an X. This is made for seeing users who aren't using a screen reader. It's not actually the letter X if we inspect it, or I think Chrome is going to lie to me and, and show you the symbol. But if you look at the source code, it is an entity code, ampersand times semicolon. So to a screen reader, that is not ideal. And if we go over it with a screen reader, which I have the same thing down here uh, as a better example, this bad button and the good button, both of them look the same, but this one is just going to have that ampersand times. This one here has some screen reader magic that hides that ampersand uh, times and instead is going to tell us when you're using a screen reader some hidden text. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so when I hover over or focus on this bad button, all that it tells me is times button. Times button. One more time. Bad times button. Times button. That doesn't mean very much to me. Especially in the context of an alert here, I want it to tell me this is the close button, not the times button. And now if we switch to the good button. Close button. Good but close button. It says close button instead of times button. So let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so this is the bad button. It just has the entity code ampersand times inside the button. It's not accessible. If we look at the good button, there are two things. First, I wrapped a span around that entity code and set aria hidden to be true. So that tells basically the browser to hide it on screen readers. Instead, what we have is this aria dash label that we set to close. So whatever I put in here is going to be read out by that screen reader, uh, but close makes the most sense. So we're, this is a pretty common pattern when you're using symbols, um, things that don't really make sense when you read them out loud, like this entity code, or often arrows, like left and right arrows, you do the same thing because those are symbols and it, it sounds horrible to be read out loud. So you hide it, when it, wrap it in a span. This one doesn't have a span. So you wrap it, you hide it, and instead you give it an ARIA label set to close or close button or something like that. So that makes a really big impact. Uh, the other thing that I wanna point out, one more use for role set to alert is to do form validation or, or feedback, not validation, feedback on forms to tell a user where the problem is. So all that I'm doing in this bottom example is when a user clicks this submit button, um, I am basically turning this red and saying password must be at least eight characters. And for a seeing user who's not using a screen reader, it's pretty clear that this is the problem. Now imagine we have a really large form and there's 20 inputs and each one has its own set of validations. We wanna be able to call somebody's attention to what is the issue. So that's what I'm doing with this color. But if you're on a screen reader and you hit submit, and you don't get an alert, you don't know where the problem is, it's really not <laughs> accessible. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily know how to solve it. So what you can do is just take this existing text, it was already here when the page loaded, I didn't add anything, I didn't append anything, but I give it role set to alert when I click this button. So I have a really dumb example, I'm using jQuery again, it's not elegant, but when the form is submitted, I don't even check if the password is less than eight characters, it's always going to fail, just to make it simple. And I'll, all I do is add the attribute role and set it to alert. And so the screen reader is going to notice that just like any other time we have role alert and it reads it out loud. So this is a nice way of making sort of accessible forms, set role to alert on your error text. So let's give it a shot with a screen reader. Okay, so I filled out my form. I'm now going to submit this form. My password isn't long enough as you can see, but let's say I don't know that. I'm going to hit space. Password must be at least eight characters. And it tells me password must be at least eight characters and it gives me that alert tone. One more time. Password must be at least eight characters. Okay, so that tone is important, but also it reads that text out right away. And of course, this example is hard-coded, but we could have a bunch of different options for that alert text that we're 
putting that role set to alert attribute on and it will be read out loud. So that makes a form a lot more accessible. And I'm gonna do a separate video on forms and accessibility because we have to talk about labels and hidden labels and a couple of other things, but this is one use for the role attribute. So that's pretty much it for alerts. Uh, a really important piece of, of accessibility technology, I don't know, whatever the terminology is, it makes a big difference. It's not just about providing a better experience around, you know, images, for example. It's nice to have those details to explain what's happening in, in an image, but this has serious repercussions if a user doesn't know that something bad is happening, if a user is unaware that there's some big warning that is really bad. So roll, set to alert, very important. That's it. I'll be quiet. Okay. I'll come back with another one of these videos in a couple days.